Well, hello, hello, everyone. This Hi, is uh, another episode of our favorite web, web series. Well, yes. I, I guess I couldn't, I can't say it. it's kind of conceited, huh? No? <laughs> okay. Anyway, welcome to Marriage Matters. Yes, <laughs> so, welcome. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, my name is Glenn Coleman. And I'm Tanya Coleman. And uh, we're just a couple who are par- who are passionate about marriage and yes. relationships. And yes. our goal every week is to bring you tips and tricks. <laughs> tips. And tricks. And advice. I like to say tips and tricks. I know you it's do. It's two T's. Okay. So tips and tricks on how, and advice, on how to Encouragement. better. Encouragement. Encouragement, how to enhance, how to better your marriage or relationship. Yes. So, um, how are you doing this week? I'm doing well. I'm doing okay, good. got your hair all straight and long and stuff. I yeah. see. That ain't weave neither. No, it's That's not. That's all hers. <laughs> so, it's just like all mine gone and hers is long. So. You want some of this? I thought about getting the man weave. No, you didn't. Say, That's not fair. No, I always say, didn't. you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, ladies, you got the advantage. How? Because y'all can do so much. You can do the weave and, you know, all this stuff that you guys can do. And, you know what I'm saying? We don't have... There are options. Spanx. There are a lot of options for ladies. Y'all have the Spanx? You wouldn't wear them if you, if you, if you wanted to. If you tried them, you wouldn't no, wear them. If you would. had to, I you wouldn't wear them. Anyway, okay. I'm getting off subject. Anyway. Way off subject. <laughs> <laughs> so, this week, uh, we, uh, you know, we always like to recommend something uh, for you guys every week. And so... Uh, this week we're recommending um, 52 Uncommon Dates. This is a, a book by Gary Chapman, the same guy who wrote uh, Five Love Languages. Yes, one of our favorites. Um, and uh, this is one of the books. A couple of weeks ago we were able to attend the um, mar- a marriage conference at First Moss Bluff mm-hmm. uh, here in Moss Bluff, Louisiana. And our uh, friends... Uh, it's because I'm calling him friend because right. he said they that we were friends. friends. Yes. Uh, Dave and Ashley Willis were there, and we had an awesome time. But this is this is one of the free books we got yeah, uh, for at that, it, uh, at that conference. They gave away for free, so it's 52 uncommon dates. And so you know, in this busy world, one of the things, and we still struggle with this. Like I said, guys, we're not perfect. We're still working at this mm-hmm. thing. And one of the things that we do struggle with is date night. Yeah. We do not have a consistent date night, nope, which don't. is something that we. Uh, probably need to do Mm -hmm. and it's just about planning for us about making the time to do it but the thing i like about this book is is, it's 52 dates that you can do with your spouse and i just had uh was one i was reading through this this morning and um the uh this one is called this this is number eight this is called the sunrise date and it has scripture that kind of alludes to that um then it tells you how to do it set this that set the scene um, and then it gives you some things to um, uh, to do to make this happen, making it happen. So, so is this an at-home date? So now this one, it could, it could be. Okay. Is because, it, so the first thing is scout the location. So maybe it's your okay, backyard. So like you can do a, ba- maybe okay. it's your backyard. Okay. Or, so you go out and find a good location mm-hmm. to watch the sunrise. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. So then it says know your meteor- meteorology. You know, look at the... Find out what time the sun rises, the right. weather, whatever. Right. Um, adjust your sleep your sleep schedule. Mm-hmm. So you may have to go to bed a little bit earlier right. if you want to do this. Um, don't show up empty-handed. You know, bring coffee, donuts, um, and then approach the date with Psalms 11, I mean, 118 and 24 attitude. So in other words, what I like, I like about it is it gives you the, the date idea. Then it gives you all of these tips and tricks. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let him roll. To, to make sure that the date happens and some right. things to make the date interesting. And mm-hmm. so it's, it's 52 of things. Like this is the garage sale date. Okay. You know, uh, the dancing date. I like that one. Uh, the apple picking date. So it's, it's a whole bunch of them in Very here. Very so um, cute. this is a great Unique book. ideas. 52 uncommon dates by gary chapman um books ten dollars and i'm pretty sure you may can get it on amazon for less than that sure. so this is a great book uh so i we encourage you to pick it up so let's get into today's topic yes sir and today we're going to be talking about expectations yeah expectations expectations yeah okay <laughs> i thought you was gonna say something no i'm, I'm letting you start so off. i'm gonna okay i'm gonna start off uh in honor of you 
Okay. I'm going to give a definition. Thank you. I appreciate you know, that. Tanya likes definitions. I, do. I love definitions. <laughs> so I looked up the word expectation, and the word expectations is a strong belief that someone that something will happen or be the case in the future. Hmm. A strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Okay. okay. I like that. So let me back up a little bit. So one of the things, one of the pitfalls, I think, that couples don't do, um, especially before they get married, mm -hmm. is set expectations. Sure. So expectations are very important, you know, mm -hmm. in in um, in marriage and relationships mm -hmm. because, and I guess I may be getting ahead of myself, but a lot of times I think a lot of frustration can be directly linked to unmet expectations. Right. And that um, usually that's because um, they're not discussed. Right. They're not, like as you said, they're not set expectations. Right. Sometimes people have expectations in their mind. They have expectations of the other person, what they expect of them, but they have not communicated them. And the couple hasn't sat down together to discuss the expectations within the marriage. Yep. So yeah. that's where trouble happens. Yeah. So, so expectations is a strong belief. Now, I like that they use the word belief mm -hmm. because for a lot of times I think we tend to think that expectations are, um, are facts or, you got what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These are, you know, these, they're, they're, I guess that's the word I want to look for. They're fact. It, it, I, I always think of them and I guess that comes from my teaching background <laughs> Um, that in the classroom, instead of using rules, we use expectations. But even those expectations in the classroom, mm -hmm. they're not like law. That's maybe right. what I'm looking okay. for. Expectations are not laws. They're set by someone mm -hmm. based on someone's, like I said here, beliefs. Right, or preference. Or preference. So a lot of times we come into relationships and we and we internally are, have our expectations set. Right. And when people don't meet those expectations, we feel violated because we feel like our laws or like right. a law has been violated. When in actuality, a law hasn't been right. violated. Right. It's just a preference that has been right. violated. That hasn't been met. Yeah. So, you know, so that's really what I want to talk about, you know, is really getting into what are mm -hmm. expectations. Mm -hmm. So look, listen to this. So my expectations are based on my reality. Sure. So my expectations, so when it comes to a great example, when it comes to uh, cleaning. Mm -hmm. My expectations and mm -hmm. your expectations may be totally, may be sure. different. Mm -hmm. You know, my expectation may be, you know, for instance, uh, shout out to my mother-in-law, Deborah Thomas. You I know, know. <laughs> when I met Tanya, I used to, I used to work at UPS. Mm -hmm. And so I used to work the night shift. So pretty much every night before I went to work, mm -hmm. I would go to Tanya's house. Mm -hmm. So most of them I'd have dinner with you guys before mm -hmm. I went to work. But every night, Tanya's mom would have her and her, her younger sister, Takesha. Mm -hmm. Every night, they had to wash the dishes, which, okay, reasonable. Mm -hmm. They had to sweep the floor and mop the floor every night. Mm -hmm. That was her expectation. Yeah, you wipe all the countertops. Now, the coming stove, in the, from, it, from yeah. my gr growing, my upbringing, we did that once a week on Saturday morning. The sweeping and mopping. The sweeping and mopping. Right. And mm -hmm. vacuuming floors and all right. that stuff. Right. We didn't do that every night. Yeah. So who's right? Was your mom right or was my mom right? It was their preference. It it's their preference. Right Nobody's or right or wrong. Right. So that's what I'm getting at. So expectations is based on reality. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, you know, I'm trying to, a lot of times when expectations are not met, we're so hurt and we're so crushed. And I understand that. But what you have to understand is that those are your expectations. Right. Right. That, that may not be your spouse's expectations. Right. So that's why I'm saying it's very important uh, going into, into a relationship or even if you're in a relationship now mm -hmm. that you have to sit down and set expectations together. And that's one thing right. I love. That's one of the things that we do in uh, our premarital counseling classes yeah. is we really bring out questions to help them set expectations right. around, you know, family members. What, what, are, what are those expectations around family members? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to spend holidays with? Right. Is, are, are, are you automatically assuming that you're going to spend holidays with your family right. or your family? Right. Are we going to create our own right. traditions? traditions yeah. What are your expectations around spending and saving? Right. What are your expectations around sex? Right. You know, my expectation may be that we have sex, you know, four times a week. Mm -hmm. And your expectations may be like, you know, one is good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But so, in other words, we we have to talk through right. those expectations. Right. But they're based on our reality. And I think what really brings this out, one of the things I also did was I looked up some synonyms mm -hmm. for expectations. Okay. So here's some synonyms. For, for those of you who, it's been a while since you've been in school, synonyms are <laughs> words that are similar or the same, right? right? Mm -hmm. So synonyms for expectations are, are assumption, mm -hmm. presumption, and probability. Yeah. So as you can see, there's nothing factual about right. that. Now listen at the, uh, the antonyms, the, the opposite mm -hmm. for expectation. The opposite of expectation is truth. Yeah. So your expectation is not truth. Yeah, that's good. It's your preference. Mm -hmm. It's it may be true for you, mm -hmm. but it's not a truth. Right. You, you yeah. got you got Absolutely. what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, it's re, here's another one. Reality. Mm. Your expectation may not be reality. Yeah. It 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 may not be reality. Right. And, and you know that's funny because even you know um, our family of origin plays a huge role in our expectations. Did you read the next bullet point? I did. I read it earlier. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to. But you know, yeah. it plays a huge role in how we do things and how we uh, how we operate within our, our marriage or yeah. with our children and things like that. And so, uh, thinking back to what you talk, we're talking about with the expectation my mom had with how we cleaned the kitchen every night, and which included sweeping and mopping the floors. Um, I look at like our lifestyle today and the busyness of our lifestyle and our children's um, lifestyle. That is not a realistic expectation for us to do it every night. Right now, it can happen maybe a couple times out of the week, but it's not realistic for us to say, "Oh, we're gonna sweep and mop every night." Right. You know, right. here we are. A we use real plates. You know, in our house. I would like to use real plates every day, but um, you know, just the way that we're always going, we are a family of paper platers. Yep. You know, so sorry, sorry, tree huggers. <laughs> so, sorry, Jeremiah. That was right. a cute picture. Wasn't that so with, uh, cute? With Takesha sitting, our nephew My Jeremiah. My nephew, he was holding hugging, on to hugging the, the tree. tree for 10 I said, minutes. "Oh, he's a tree hugger." <laughs> so sorry, Jeremiah. But uh, but yeah, so fam family of origin plays a role, a huge role in setting mm -hmm. your expectations. Mm -hmm. So you know. Um, family, you know, dinners, fa all yeah. that stuff, um, mm -hmm. how you grew up. Maybe you grew up, grew up in a single parent home, mm -hmm. you know, and so there's some expectations there around, or maybe you don't even know what those expectations are for a husband or, or right. a wife. Right, you were never taught You were never taught those expectations. Right. Or right. maybe, you know, and I always say this, you know, I grew up, I love the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. And so the Cosby show was always like my idea of what a family uh was supposed to family unit family unit was supposed to be like right but that was scripted and written sure. out so mm -hmm. that wasn't those expectations mm -hmm. may not work right in our relationship mm -hmm. okay so so family board so that's one thing you have to realize so that's another reason why again you have to come together and talk about these mm -hmm. things which i think this may be my next uh, uh bullet point here um expectations often do not match. Mm -hmm. That's not this, but I'll go to, get to the next one. Okay. Part. I want to say that expectations, most of the time they don't match. Right. Because you grew up differently. Right. Because right. you grew up so differently. Mm -hmm. Maybe from different different uh, areas. I know people, uh, I know couples, um, like one couple, I don't know them personally, I listen to their podcast, mm -hmm. but he grew up in South Carolina, in, okay. the, in the South, mm -hmm. you know, very traditional, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Bible Belt, sure. uh, Christian values, mm -hmm. and his wife grew up in Seattle, mm -hmm. which is more liberal. Right. Um, you know, things are a little more loose, mm -hmm. uh, and they had a lot of when it came to like their roles in marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, he expected her to, you know, do like, you know, you know, like southern, his southern so, right. You know, it's all about <laughs> making sure the house is nice right. and neat and right. in the parties, you know, entertaining mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and and when so when they got married, she's like, I don't do none of that. You right. know, I don't, right. you know, and so that could have been or that was for them. And that was just one example about the parties. But there's just right. different Several expectations as to yeah. what a wife and what a husband right. is supposed to be. When you were talking about the uh, the differences of expectations, I was thinking about a story I heard the other day listening to a podcast where this couple came together. They were a Christian couple. They met at a Christian college, um, got married, 
and when they got married uh, the wife naturally assumed that she would go to the husband's church so the husband grew up you know in a christian um denomination however they didn't believe in instruments in the church mm -hmm. and then the wife you know she grew up in this um non-denominational you know Pentecostal, worship you know yeah, yeah free kind of yeah. and worship environment and so uh, for years she did this and there was this resentment, you know, building up in her heart. And so finally they had the conversation about it and he's like, look, you know, we have reverence for God. You know, we don't, we sing acapella, we worship, but we sing acapella. When I go to your parents' church, it's like a rock concert, you know, kind of thing. And, but she wasn't getting all that she needed and they never had a discussion about it until mm -hmm. they were years into their marriage and so there they were with these unmet expectations that they had never discussed mm -hmm. and it was it was about christianity where mm -hmm. they went to church yeah. you know so that brings me to my next point is that expectations often go unvoiced yeah mm -hmm. you know it's so crazy to me how we can have these expectations mm -hmm. and we can expect our spouse to meet these expectations, right. but we never tell them to mm -hmm. our spouse. Mm -hmm. And so here we are asking, you know, our spouses to meet these expectations mm -hmm. and your spouse may not even know, we automatically assume that my expectations are her expectations. Right. And that's not... Right, that's not that's necessarily not the, true. That's the, that's, thank you, I was trying to say that. Not <laughs> necessarily true. I often say it's hard to hit a target that you don't even know where the target right. is. Right, right. You know, the, so it's it, like having on a blindfold. Yeah. And, and you're just shooting and you and you, you're never going to hit. So a lot of times, you know, um, expectations go unvoiced and I cannot do what I don't know. I cannot expect mm -hmm. uh, what I don't make known. So right. I can't expect you to do something right. when I don't make that known. Right. And the thing about that, a lot of times those unvoiced expectations are the very things that that cause resentment right. in our marriage right. you know we can become very resentful mm -hmm. um towards our spouse mm -hmm. um you know as it concerns our un unvoiced expectations right you know go, go ahead no i was just gonna say that is it seems to be almost a default for many people that they do not voice what their expectations are yet their feelings are hurt when their expectations are not met yeah and my that's the craziest I, thing right it's like okay you have how am i supposed to know i can't read your mind you know i i am unable to always predict sometimes i may be able to and and i get it right you know thank god for holy spirit well you know he leads us but you can't expect people to just know what it is that you want or that you need and so it, that's why it's important for especially couples who have yet to become married to have a lot of conversations ask a lot of questions if you think it and you're not sure ask yeah you know and talk, we, we do no that secrets. we do that in our premarital cl Absolutely. classes i don't know uh -huh. why i can't talk today I'm sounding like <laughs> my dad cl cl classes <laughs> uh but um we do that we, we ask them right. about those things you know there's been I've heard of cases where people have gotten married, then they never set expectation expectations as it concerns their kids. Right, right. So then they get married. One spouse wants kids, the other spouse doesn't want kids, and mm -hmm. it's like, like what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, right. So um, another good one, you know, I, I we kind of talked about this earlier is you know around money, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so like for me, my expectations as it concerns money is I don't want to spend any of it. I like to hold on to it and save it, <laughs> you know, and I, and Tanya's not a spender just like crazy. No, I'm not a spender. But she's more, more apt to go and buy something that she wants. Like she just, if she wants a dress, he'll go and do that. I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. I, I will save and I won't buy, you know, and, and I used to, I, now when it comes to like equipment and stuff like right. that. And my reasoning behind that, especially when we had the business, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, well, this is going to make us money. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, when you, when Tanya would go and buy things, I would be like, oh, you know, why, you know, it's like, it, it would cause some level of resentment, mm -hmm. but I never, we never sat down and created a budget. 
No, we didn't. So how can I expect her to kind to of the same thing what to your know what was. my expectation right. was, right? And for me to know what her expectation was, but what a budget does is it well, all the budget is is setting expectations together for, for the money. You tell them the money what you needed right. to do. Yep. So that's just one example of, mm -hmm. of so many times when we and you know we sometimes and I'm notorious for this is you don't want to say because you don't want to hurt their feelings, right? But it's it's not it's not that you if you say it in the right way, mm -hmm. you it's it's your 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 goal is to make the marriage or the relationship better, right? And saying I'm the personality that I want for you to say it. I want for you to tell me if something is bothering you. If you feel like okay, we're spending too much money in this particular area. If you feel like I'm doing the job wrong let me know so that I can make adjustments and I can make corrections. Don't worry about hurting my feelings. If, if my feelings are hurt, that's, you know, that's on me. If you know that you've come to me in, you know, in a loving way, you know, but I want to know, I don't mm -hmm. want for there to be like, we've always talked about that white elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, I truly believe in that. We talk about everything all the time, you know, yeah. So, and that we don't leave anything uncovered, you know, and sweep it under the rug. Yeah. So, you know, in wrapping this up, you know, the, the, and, and we never, again, like we always say, we never want to tell you this is what you need to do. But, right. Absolutely. But, you you know, expectations, you've got to set them together. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get to the place to where these are my expectations and these are my expect these are her expectations. Right. And then we never come together and voice those expectations right. and find middle ground right. on, those, on, those, right. on those expectations mm -hmm. because they're going to cause resentment. They're going to mm -hmm. cause frustration. So you need to get them out in the open mm -hmm. and you need to have those discussions around your expectations. Expectations are a good thing. Yep. It's a good thing. Expectations, all they are are goals, maybe. You can look yeah, at them as goals that's a good one. To, to hit. But if we're not, if, if I am trying to, uh, you know, hit this goal over here, mm -hmm. but she's trying to hit this goal over here, then we're walking in and going in, in different uh, right. directions. directions. Yeah. You know, and we're always going to be frustrated at each right. other. We're not going to feel supported by each other. Mm -hmm. And we're always going to feel lacking. So what you, we have to do as a, as a couple, we have right. to come together and voice the expectations mm -hmm. and then set expectations together. Right. And through that, you will always have, you know, realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. And expectations that work for, for you everyone. and that balance out in your relationship. Right. So don't allow expectations to be a, a, a frustration point mm -hmm. for you in your marriage. Have those discussions and set expectations together. Yep. I agree. It was good. I like that topic. Okay, cool deal. So <laughs> in wrapping up, you know, we always want your feedback we love the feedback we yeah. love the conversation we love the community thank you guys for being a, a participant in Absolutely. this um, and if you have any questions any suggested show topics any questions that you would like for us to answer you can email us at info at marriage matters to us dot com info, info at marriage matters to us dot com or you can text your, your questions, answers, or show topics to 337-415-9535. That's 337-415-9535. And as always, we want to thank you for subscribing and liking the Facebook uh, and Instagram channel. Yes. Uh, if you haven't, please do so. Continue to share, 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 share. share, share. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube page. Yes. And when you subscribe, make sure you click the alert uh, bell next to the subscription button. So that you get a notification every time we post a video. So that's all we have for you today. Anything that's else? That's it. That's it. All right. Well, this is Glenn and Tanya Coleman letting you know that your, your marriage, marriage matters. matters. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.